The Digital Currency Group is an organization that purports to be the accelerator of a better financial system. But the ownership and money behind the DCG points to something totally different. It's part one of a three-part series that's exposing one of the largest players in the cryptoverse, how they are positioning themselves to be the first crypto cartel. Let's get them. Welcome to BitBoy Crypto, the largest and greatest crypto community in all the interwebs. My name is Ben. Every day on this channel, I show you how to make money in crypto. If you like money and crypto, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Every day on this channel, as you know, we teach you about crypto. And this video in particular is extremely important for your crypto journey. Whether you've been in it for a while like me or just starting out. Knowing the landscape is important not just for survival, but for success. This video is the first in a series of investigations into the big movers in the cryptoverse. I'm going to be digging up clues, but I need you, the Bit Squad, to put on your deer stalker hats and light your calabash pipes. Foul play is afoot. There's a threat to crypto, and it's from a pod of whales working under the umbrella of the digital currency group. On the surface, the DCG looks just like any other crypto VC investment firm. But the more you look, the more bizarre things get. The DCG was started by a man named Barry Silbert back in 2011. But Barry Silbert gained influence early on in his career when he started the company Second Market, just a few years after he graduated from Emory University. Second Market drew over $30 million in funding from all parts of the world. More on that in a moment. Barry soon got on the radar of the World Economic Forum. You know, the you'll own nothing and be happy folks. Well, here's Barry on their website and here he is doing a video for them. Probably harmless, but what was Second Market and what does it have to do with crypto? Second Market was a website for trading and selling alternative investments. Barry and his team made a lot of money during the 2008 financial crisis by profiting off many exotic investments, including collateralized debt obligations or CDOs. CDOs are one of the main drivers of people losing their houses back during the mortgage crash. All this profit during a time of incredible loss to the middle class drew the attention of Hong Kong-based investment company, Temasek. Temasek invested $15 million into Second Market under the condition Second Market turns its focus to Asia, and that they did. Barry and Second Market became embedded into Temasek and its leadership, including billionaire Li ka -shing. The leadership of Temasek has several board members that served in political organizations from all over the APAC region, but mostly Singapore and China, two countries whose governments don't really have freedom on their list of priorities. In fact, if you look at the board members of Temasek, it's populated with former CCP apparatchiks. From there, Second Market was spun off as the We Promise We're Not Sketchy NASDAQ Private Market, and Barry moved his and his investors' attention to Bitcoin. This was all happening in 2011, only a few years after the first Bitcoin had been mined. It was soon after that China started to assert itself as the technology leader for Bitcoin mining. A lot of crypto development was happening in Asia at this time as well. But while Binance wouldn't get started for another six years, the money and influencers in China wanted to position themselves to maintain control of this new and possibly disruptive new form of money. Barry Silbert was their perfect candidate. The digital currency group was started in 2011 with Barry installed as the CEO. But the money behind the DCG is the furthest thing from cypherpunk startup. Just look at their investors. Western Union, MasterCard, New York Life, CME Ventures. These aren't just whales. These are institutions, but take a closer look. Novel TMT Ventures, a Virgin Islands-based investment group, sketchy, and HCM Capital, a Beijing-based subsidiary of none other than Foxconn, the world's largest cell phone manufacturer, and a company that is known to work hand in glove with the Chinese Communist Party. The DCG is a front for whales and institutions to gain influence and control the cryptoverse. The sheer mass of the DCG's weight in crypto is staggering. They either own or have large financial stakes and an absurd number of projects. Here's a quick list. Akala, the Bray Browser, Circle, Coinbase, Etherscan, Kraken, Ledger, the Lightning Network, Ripple, Zcash, and most importantly, they own Coindesk and Grayscale. Now, before we keep going, I wanna make it clear that just because a project or a company is in the DCG portfolio, doesn't mean it's sketchy or bad tech or illegitimate. For example, we love Ledger. They have a great product for protecting your private keys and we have a relationship with them. 
Giant firms like this will have their capital put into anything they would think will make them a return, and it's not always to serve another purpose. But the moves they make and the narratives they push are what you need to keep your eyes on. The fact that a multinational company with ties, direct ties to the CCP, has ownership to the largest crypto fund, Grayscale, and the largest crypto news organization, Coindesk, well, that should be concerning to you. Just like our old friend Jim Cramer was talking about, it's part and parcel for whales to use their power to move markets in ways they want. They aren't always successful, but when they are, they make big moves. For instance, why do you think that Binance has been getting all sorts of regulatory pressure and bad press lately? Binance is outside of the DCG. They're a competitor with DCG approved exchanges, Coinbase and Kraken. So they are pushing and pulling every way they can to take Binance down off the top spot of crypto exchanges. Binance is the embodiment of decentralization. They don't even have an office. The employees work literally all over the world. And its founder, CZ, doesn't even own a house. He rents hotel rooms. When you see an article on Coindesk, good or bad, always think about the DCG and check to see if what they are saying just so happens to benefit their portfolio. It's not always the case. Coindesk can do good reporting. We use them as a reference all the time. But we're also aware when the DCG has stepped in and recentered the work of the reporters at Coindesk. Before I move on, I need all of you who are watching this video to like it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. YouTube is doing their best to push down crypto information. So just by doing those two things, you help us out a ton. Thank you, BitSquad. I'm making these videos to give you the edge you need to not get shaken out. Am I saying that crypto is a rigged game just like the stock market? Well, far from it. Most crypto assets are on a public ledger. There are no special trading hours for whales only, and the majority of projects are run in a decentralized manner. Crypto is still very much the Wild West. And there are few, if any, governments that a hedge fund can bribe or complain to when they are having a bad day. But crypto is big money, so it only makes sense that big money people were going to come in. It's been like this since the early days. It's not rigged. They're just in the big leagues. There's a lot of money to be made, so the folks at the top are going to try and keep down the little guy, the retail investor, as best they can. But it takes them a lot of effort. They don't have governments to do their dirty work, although they are trying to get them involved as quickly as possible. It's not surprising that governments around the world are suddenly taking a lot of time out of the post-pandemic schedule to get this whole Bitcoin thing under their control. You would think they would have other priorities, like getting the economy to recover, people getting their jobs back, the global mental health crisis that bloomed last year, the list goes on and on. No, the governments want to get that magic internet money under wraps. Weird, huh? So here's how you can fight back. Step one, huddle your Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Cardano. Step two, think critically. That's what got you into crypto in the first place. You started thinking critically about money and finance. Step three, be in the Bit Squad. We're on the trail of these whales and there will be more investigation videos coming very soon. You're definitely not going to want to miss what we found next. That's all I got. Be blessed. Bitboy out.